Good afternoon everyone. Today I'm going to be making some pom-poms with Matthew. So we're going to start by getting a piece of cardboard and drawing two circles. Now I've used a bowl and another smaller container to do it. So all you need is pencil, and draw around the outside doesn't need to be perfect and then you need scissors I'd say you can use a compass if you've got one I'm just keeping it really simple I've got some but they are not that big doesn't need to be exact although it's a good idea if they're similar pretty close See, so I'm going to cut these out and I'll be back in a bit, little bit Okay, so now I have two donuts basically out of cardboard. These are just an old box that I cut up. You could use a cereal box as well. So that's the main thing and you put them together like that. Now I'm just going to go get some wool. Okay, so now once you've got your two donuts and you've got your bit of wool. Now I've cut off a bit of wool and rounded up around my hand so that I can get it through the hole. Through the hole. So that part's really important. Sorry. So... Matthew, you're watching. So you start with your wool that way and just stuff it through and you just keep winding it around. That looks easy. It is easy. As I said, making a pom pom is easy. Must be easier than the cotton. Now, I'm having trouble. We, I use some fairly thick cardboard there, so you basically just kind of keep winding this around. Until you've got a pom pom? Pom pom. Matthew's okay. having trouble pronouncing pom pom. It's getting a little bit annoying. So just tuck that end under there so it doesn't keep coming out because that's getting a little bit irritating. It's very important to make sure you've got the two bits of cardboard. The two bits of cardboard are very important. I only got one. So far, you'll be doing another one. Can't you do my second one? Possibly. This one's so large. So, my bits of, bit of wool's getting a little bit untidy at the moment. Untidy it. I mean tidy it if it gets untidy. It doesn't really matter if it's untidy. And this is a fairly time consuming process. Look at me. That is not good. I think I'm going to have to clean up Matthew's cutting. Oh dear. Okay. Where'd it go? So you just keep winding it around. Now I'm going to come back in a little bit once I've done a little bit more. We'll be back soon. Now, I haven't gotten very far so far, but I've got a little way. But I thought I, I, I came across a problem where my wool was getting all tangled. So I'm going to wind my wool around another bit of cardboard that I've cut up. <coughs> uh, now, it's got to fit through my hole, <laughs> which it will at the moment. The hole's going to get smaller though, so... Uh, so I'm gonna hold that on there and just wind that and just wind that on. Now this will help stop the wool from getting tangled. So I'm just gonna wind all my wool onto here so that I can thread it through the hole and it'll make life a little easier. Okay, I'm making one up for Matthew now because his wool's gotten all tangled. Um, I've made it a bit longer so it's going to make it look quicker. Anyway, back soon. Okay, so as you can see, I'm winding the uh, cable legs getting in the road. Sorry, my tripod's a little bit short. As you can see, I'm just winding the wool onto the bit of cardboard. I mean, obviously, it's going to be better if you buy a thing and that's made for it but this is free all you need to do is buy the wool um, and it 
adds creativity. So yes, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, now the purpose for these is to make it so that your wool doesn't get as tangled. Now I really should have done mine on a longer one, and next lot of wool I will use a longer bit, like it, which is why I've done Matthews on a long one. Yeah, back soon. Okay, so with my little one I'm still not untangled. Matthew's back to doing his already. Um, I'm not going to get this all finished tonight, so I'll have to do a second part of the pom-pom making. So this is what we're at so far. And we'll do an update later with the rest of the pom-pom making. Um, but yes, um, I'm still all tangled. Not me. <laughs> Matthew's doing very well over there with his big thing in between things. But that's probably this for today's video. I'll do another video once we're further along in our pom-pom making journey. <clears throat> so yes and I'll put a um, I'll either put it as a playlist or I'll join the videos together one or the other <laughs> either way I'll leave a link into the description with the next video once it's ready so yeah, have a great day any comments, questions or suggestions leave them below and I'm sure there are other ways of making pom-poms in fact I know there are other ways of making pom-poms in fact, you can do it doing it like this and have a big roll that way. But when you see the way this turns out in the end, it's why it's my preferred method of making a pom-pom. So now that I've got my, my needle type thing ready, um, all I do with it is just <laughs> drop it on the ground. <laughs> So what happens when you're trying to do this around a table because you've got your tripod standing on the table which is probably a bad idea especially considering I'm right-handed and the table is blocking my right hand so I'm doing this left-handed not really the best idea I've ever had but this is much easier than it was when I had the wool all rolled up so it's been a long time since I've made a pom-pom Pom-pom. I said pom-pom. I know. Yes, you said pom-pom. Well done, Matthew. So as you can see, it makes it a lot easier when you've got a... Is it called a shuttle? To throw it through? I know when, it, when you're weaving, it's called a shuttle. Because the shuttle goes through a loom. I keep thinking it's a loom, but it's not a loom. I think it's a shuttle. Yeah, so... You just keep going around. Keep going around. Oh, Matthew. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm. No, you're not. You're doing it all in one spot. See what I'm doing different to you. How is mine different? Yes, it is. It's going all the way around, not just in one spot. So you need to make it so that it's all even all the way around. Now, it's Matthew's just get, done his all in one spot. It's starting to get tangled. Yeah, a little bit. So you just keep winding it through. And if you get tangled, you just do something as you work. Oh, yeah. You just keep going around because you're building up the wall. There's Matthew's. And I was so busy detangling my wall, I didn't see what Matthew was doing. So the idea is you want to have an even coverage around the entire circle. You don't want it all bunched up in the one spot. Why? Because you don't. It's not the way it works. It won't look right. You won't have a nice round pom-pom. Yeah, it does take a lot of wool to make a pom-pom. It's not a short task. It's not a small amount of wool. It's a lot of wool. Well, we haven't used much yet. What we've got on these little shuttles at the moment isn't all we're going to use. There'll be a lot more wool. 
that we have to use. But so more on this. <clears throat> a lot more than that. Um. I hear a little baby was waking. Yes, got a, my little toddler's waking up. I'm not quite sure how he'd go with this. This could be interesting. Um. So I'd love to see photos of when you make your pom pom. If you want to share it on the YouTube channel or up on the Facebook page, that would be great. I'd love to see what you've done or send me a text message with it. Um, so it's not a short process, it's going to take us a while to get this done. Um, I'm getting better. Yeah, it's improving, but you need to do it evenly, Matthew. See how I'm doing it evenly around the entire circle? Yeah. Good little activity to do whilst watching TV or something. Or listening to an audiobook. Listening to an audiobook would be even better. I have to start sharing some of the audiobooks that I like to listen to. Just um, like Justin Rhodes does. Yeah. So what are some of the audio books we've been listening to through Audible, Matthew? Farmer Boy. We have. We've been listening to the, that's part of the Little House in the Prairie oh, series. Oh, so mm -hmm. The Little House in the Prairie series is a series of seven books written by Laura Ingalls Wilder. We've listened to all of them. We've even got the DVD. Yeah, the DVD series. Is much different. Is very different from the books. I personally prefer the books. Um, I got the books so I can read, but I got my own phone so I listen to Audible by myself sometimes. You've got an old phone of mine and all it does, it's not connected to any phone line, it's just for you to be able to listen to audiobooks and to video things so you can put them up on your YouTube channel. And read my Bible. <coughs> mm -hmm. Get good badges on my Bible. Now you're going around, hey, buddy. Yeah. So you just keep going around and around and around and around and around. And eventually it'll get to the point where this hole in the middle is quite small. So it's quite difficult to get the shuttle through at that point. Um, and that's when you get to the next stage. What's that? When you actually go through... And you make the pom-pom. Turn the wool into the pom-pom. So, And what we'll do at that point is we'll actually get our scissor de scissors down in between those two bits of cardboard. Scissors down and cut around here. Um, and then you'll tie a bit of wool around it and tighten it up nicely. And then take the cardboard off. But I'll show you that in... Probably a later video because I'm not going to get that all done today. As you can see this is going to be a fairly time consuming process. But we're certainly making good progress. Um, although this video has already been going for, I think I've already recorded 13 minutes. And we've been going a lot longer than that because I've stopped and started things. Um, yeah, so... A very calming process, very methodical, very repetitive, <laughs> so very just... long. But anything worth doing is worth taking time to do it. So, yeah, this is one little craft activity. And next time you see a pom pom, you'll have a whole new experience, a whole new set of appreciation for said pom pom. And as I said, there are other ways of doing it. This is just one way. This is the way I was taught when I was in grade three, I think. Might have been grade four. Yes, I'm going to have to go because Jonathan's waking up from his nap. And I'll do the next video when we're a little bit further along in the process. So we can show you the next step. And you can always change the colour of your wool. Like I'm going to run out of wool on this 
shuttle soon. As you can see, it's a lot quicker now that I've got the little made the shuttle thing. I'm not sure what else to call it. I'm sure it's got a name, but I can't think of what it is at the moment. Maybe you can think about it in the next video. <clears throat> Possibly. But this is fairly time consuming. But yeah, in any case, I'll see you in the next video. Look at this. Bless you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so now, as you can see, I've wound the wool around lots and lots of times. I can't actually even get my shuttle through there anymore. So the next step is to get your scissors and carefully, without cutting yourself, to start cutting your wool. Now, ideally, you want to be in between your two bits of cardboard. So you can see that I've got my two bits of cardboard there. So. Look, I nearly finished my first layer. So you want to do this very carefully. So now that you've got that part done, you want to spread your cardboard a little bit because you need to get a bit of thread around there. So just pause that for a second because I need to get some wool. Okay, so I've got my second bit, my extra bit of wool, so we're just going to put that in there in between the two layers of cardboard. Bring that around. Now I've got a fairly long line on this. Long line. Oh, I'm not sure what to call it. Um, string on it. So what we need to do is just tie it in a knot. You can do a reef knot, you can do a boring ordinary knot, but the main thing is you need to get that knot really, really tight. I'm going to turn mine over and take it backwards and forwards a few times. So you need to get that not really super tight it's a bit hard to do so you just got your knot there so that's holding everything together then you just pull your cardboard out <coughs> careful not to pull any bits of wool out because they're only short bits of well, and there's your pom-pom. One pom-pom. And because I put a decent string on, I've got a bit of a lead on mine. And now I have a toddler that would like it. So yes, one pom-pom. Jonathan thinks it's very, very exciting. What do you use pom-poms for? The decoration. <laughs> they have no practical use that I'm aware of. Oh, yes. Look, Interesting sensory my... thing for a toddler, though. I finished my first layer. I've probably got this string a bit long for the toddler. But yes, so there is your pom pom. Bye. Bye. Yes, you can have it. So Jonathan now wants the pom pom. Anyway, have a great day. And yes, as you can see, Matthew's still got a fairly long way to go on his. I worked on mine while I was watching TV last night. Um, and. He didn't. He just what? sat. No, <laughs> but in any case, any case, have a great day. Any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them below. And I may try some other alternatives to pom-poms at some point. But this is the one that we've done today. Have a great one. Bless you.